No, hey. This is the back of the Cisco room bar. As you can see, there are two uh, braces that can be used to connect visa mounts. So on the back of your monitor, a normal monitor would have a visa mount on the back. Very simple. There's some thumb screws to connect up here and it snaps in. All you have is power, Ethernet, and HDMI. Okay, the HDMI connects to your monitor. We can have dual monitors, so there's a second HDMI out. Additionally, there is a uh, USB-C or HDMI input that can be routed to the desk if you want to plug in your laptop to share uh, with a wired connection. But of course, you can do so with a wireless connection um, as well. So that's all it is to set that up from the backside. So here we have the Cisco room bar mounted on top of a monitor. You can see here, it's indicating that you need to follow the steps on your touch panel to finish setting up the system. So that would be this guy. So Cisco Navigator panel. We can see here that there is, uh, uh, select your language, right? So we're gonna pick English, hit start. And from there, it's looking for the room device. It found it, Cisco room bar, and has the IP address if you need. If you have multiple, you can verify that way. Um, and the IP is down here in the corner. Um, so now we selected it, it's authenticating, connecting to room device. So within the first 10 minutes after you boot up a device, uh, it's in pairing mode to be able to pair across the network. You can also connect this touch panel directly to the back of the, uh, of the room bar. So now it's asking, is this going to be a touch panel to control the device for placing and receiving calls, that kind of thing, or are we going to use it on like an exterior wall, uh, you know, outside the conference room and use a persistent web app to show digital signage, um, and, you know, room booking information, stuff like that. So we're going to use it as a control system. Okay. Network is connected. Tells us here, network status. We can look at all that if we want, but we're good. Boom. Okay. So now in setup, it's going to ask us to, uh, to adjust the camera view, you can adjust the tilt on the camera. You'll see the screen up front. My office is a disaster area, so I'm not gonna show all that. It's gonna test the audio. Okay. Perfect. It says there's some signal interference from other devices. That's accurate. I have multiple Cisco devices in here, so we're just gonna hit skip. Let's cast for our time zone and whether or not we wanna use uh, military 24 hour time or uh, not. So let's see, I'm, uh, we're in Eastern time zone and we'll use the 12 hour time format. So here we go, click continue. Now it's asking whether or not we wanna use the full featured Cisco room OS or if we want to run it in Microsoft Teams room mode, we can do that either way. And with both of them, it's the same steps to register here. So I'm gonna hit register and it's gonna ask for a 16 digit WebEx activation code. Now let me show you how that's done. Okay, now what we see up here is WebEx Control Hub. And I'm gonna move down to devices on the left hand side here under management. So see on Control Hub, go down the navigation uh, panel on the left. I'm gonna click on devices. Over on the top right here, we're gonna click add device and we're gonna decide whether or not this is a personal device or a device for shared usage, like for a conference room, um, that kind of workspace, right? And that's what this is, or it could be a Cisco phone. Do you wanna put in an existing workspace or new workspace? You can create a new workspace here and define some of the, I'll, I'll show that. Um, so you can define some of the parameters or you can put it into an existing workspace and then you choose which one you wanna put it in. So this is in my control hub sandbox. I believe I have one called Home Office already, so we'll change the name there to two. What type of device is it, or what type of space is this uh, going into? So I'll call this a huddle room. Room bars are good for that size uh, with a, just a handful of folks. See down here, it kind of defines the different uh, workspace sizes, meeting rooms, desk, focus, huddle, you know, two to five. That's good. Then you can define the capacity for that room. 
these are not required. Um, really, all that's required is the name. But this helps then to qualify what type of room it is. And then we have other systems where you can kind of look and use Cisco Spaces to say what rooms that can hold three or more people are available right now. So if you define all of this, then that information will be good. Now, there's a location that needs to be defined within Control Hub, um, and we will check this one here. So that that could be the campus that the that the workspace is within. Now, is it an IP phone or a collaboration device? It is a Cisco collaboration device. Hit next. Do you want calling on there? Could be WebEx Cloud calling. Uh, we could use PSTN. Are we going to say uh, no? You don't need to do any audio calling, but we'll leave WebEx calling on there. You can define scheduling if. If you have a hybrid calendar defined for your organization, synchronized with um, Exchange or Office 365. I don't for this organization, this is my sandbox. And for meetings, you can select none uh, and you can use uh, WebEx meetings online or every device comes with a free device hosted meeting uh, anyway. So and I'll put that on my sandbox org. It's not required to be able to join other meetings. If you're joining a Microsoft Teams meeting, you're joining a Zoom, Google Meet, our devices can join all of them when in room OS mode and uh, you don't need this. But this gives you a free WebEx license to host a meeting on that device. And I'm going to select that. And now here's your activation code. That's it. So now I'll show you how to punch that in and how fast the device registers. So now it's time to register the device. We've created the code and we're going to enter it onto the navigator panel. On the control up page, there was a button where you could click email. So I emailed it to myself. So I have the code here in my email. So you could deploy these without a whole lot of IT assistance, right? You could have it ready to go, create the code and all that stuff in Control Hub, and then ship these out to a remote location. And you don't need someone that's the most technically adept to install these, right? Remember, we just had power, Ethernet, and an HDMI cable hooked up to the back of this. Uh, and then we plugged this guy into Ethernet, but it could also have been wired directly to the back of the bar, the room bar. So once you do that, you power it on, it says welcome, you just literally enter the 16-digit code that we generated. So I'll show you that. Our code here is 7747. 8499-9773-1600. Let me hit continue. And you'll see it only takes a few seconds and our device is going to be registered. It says activation success. Top here, Congra uh, congratulations or configurations completed. Congratulations. Uh, so now it will, there you go. Setup complete. Your Cisco room bar is ready to go. Hit continue. So was that about maybe eight, 10 seconds after we entered a code and we're ready to make calls now. Everything's ready to go. We have um, a WebEx button on here. We have a Teams button, Google Meet, Zoom. We can do all of them, right? Um, we can also just hit call. We can make a, a phone call because we have um, WebEx calling enabled on it. We can SIP dial um, and call into it meetings, right? So we have all these options right in here. And if you have um, your integration with the calendar service, you can book and then we'll see on screen upcoming meetings and there'll just be a big green join button to join the meeting. And I'll list them here on the touch panel as well of what your meetings are in the current one uh, and whether or not it started and you click the green join button to join. It's that simple. So that's it. We're ready. We're ready to make calls. Thanks.